so we are going to um, put an IP address in a fresh uh, 1769 L32E and um, I'm going to do that using boot P and an ethernet cable because I don't have a 9-pin uh, to directly hook up to the serial port on the PLC which would be a much easier way to do it but this way will work too. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is disable our Wi-Fi so we'll go to network and sharing and we will go to um, change adapter settings and you'll see here we have our Wi-Fi connected and we're just going to right click and disable it so now our Wi-Fi is disabled um, otherwise we'll get a bunch of different IP addresses popping up or other funky stuff in, uh, in boot P. So now we have that disabled um, and we are going to go into boot P. This should come uh, installed and uh, <clears throat> as you can see right now nothing's popping up uh, even though I do have the Ethernet cable connected and so um, you can see unidentified network so we'll open that back up <clears throat> this is actually the PLC I'm connected to and uh, one other thing is I only connect to this PLC um, not through a switch not through anything else I think you can still do it through a switch but uh, as far as setup I just like to have just my laptop and the PLC so um, I am going to go into my uh, local area connection status I'm going to go to this Internet Protocol 4, and uh, as anyone experienced with PLCs knows, you have to set your IP address to something acceptable um, for the PLC based on the subnet mask and the, um, the actual values of the octet. So uh, in this case, 255.255.255.0 is a subnet mask, and so right now I can only connect to um, devices with an IP address starting in 192.168.1. Um, and you can look up why that is. Uh, it's the relationship between the subnet mask and, and this IP address. So, um, <clears throat> But we are going to change this to obtain the IP automatically. So press OK. And so now we see it's doing something. And, uh, and here we see boot P is popping up uh, with some addresses. So I'm not sure what the DHCP is on this one, but uh, you can see the boot P, um, which is enabled on the PLC right now, uh, keeps popping up with that same F4, 54, 33, 96, A6, 0, C, um, and that can be found on the side of the PLC as well, that's the MAC address. Uh, so we're gonna just going to choose any one of those, and we're going to add it to relationship list, and we're going to type in whatever we want the IP address to be. Um, and after we establish an IP address, we can go into links and change it at any time. So we just need to get one in there for now and uh, then whenever the customer wants we can change it too. So I'm going to do 192.168.1.0 um, and add it to our relationship list. Now in order to make that IP address uh, permanent um, we have to disable boot P but you can see we have a socket connect failed for blah 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 blah. Um, we failed to complete that request and that is because now that it does have an IP address, um, uh, we have to uh, we have to change our laptop's IP address as well. Oh, one thing I didn't mention to you um, is before I started, I went to um, Tools, Network Settings, and this is where you can change a subnet mask. And for this particular PLC, I looked up the manual and. Um, it tells you how to set up boot P. Um, not all these steps as clearly though, that's why I'm making this video. But you can see here they have 255.255.224 and so that's what I changed it to um, and that is also going to be required to have a pop up. So um, <clears throat> we can uh, now here we have to change our uh, laptop address back to something that's compatible with this PLC and so we're going to um, 
and just 192.168.1. Um, so we'll do 23. And then it'll automatically do 255.255.255.0. But we need it to be the same subnet mask as, uh, as boot P. So we're going to do 255.255.224. Change that. Okay. 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 And now we're going to disable boot P. We can see command is successful. Um, so that that should be it. So now um, we can uh, interact with the PLC normally as we would uh, with any other PLC that has an IP address. And like I said before, um, now we're not going to save changes. We can just go to links. There's links. Classic. And if we go to our Ethernet IP, we should see um, this guy right here. And we can uh, change that IP address right here to the port configuration. And um, yeah, so that should be all you need to. Uh, to take your PLC from fresh out of the box uh, to having a working IP address and how to change it to whatever you want. Um, just always remember that whenever you change the IP address, uh, you're probably going to have to let the screen program know as well what your new IP is going to be. So um, if you get to a customer site and they say, hey, we need you on uh, this range of IP addresses, um, you're going to have to make sure that, uh, that your screens are cooperating as well. But that's an entirely different topic, and uh, I think we've covered uh, the setup of PLC's IP pretty nicely.